is my low speed limit. And what that is, is that's the autopilot. Which I'm not sure why I'm losing signal all of a sudden. That's the autopilot telling me it's going to have to, it's going to want to pick up and, uh, and start giving it throttle. So that low speed limit, if it's, if it's, if the low speed limit's met, the autopilot with the throttle hooked up is going to try to accelerate the airplane and climb to the cruising altitude. So real quick guys, that is the uh, GPS and alert settings menu. Now we're going to get into the autopilot settings. And I'm going to show you guys how to set up autopilot in these things. Okay. Uh, the first thing to realize about the autopilot guys is unless you have your satellites and you've saved your home position, uh, you're not going to be able to use autopilot in any way. So if you're using GPS um, autopilot or GPS stabilization, uh, which are two different things, the autopilot's going to just bring you home. The stabilization will stabilize your flight. But if you don't have satellites, um, if you don't have your GPS home position set, it will not function. Uh, at all, okay. Um, so this is uh, this is the settings that I use, and this brings the penguin home every time. Um, the APRO gain is Okay, the APRO gain is what it is, is it, it determines how sensitive the loop is to heading errors. So the higher the gain, uh, the, the more it's going to try to stay on its heading course, okay? And uh, where you have to be careful is because it can go into oscillations if it's too high, all right? So that, that's the, the, the rate. The default uh, number is 50, or I think the default is 68, and that's exactly what I have here. So we're going to go down to uh, rate of turn. This is the rate of turn limit uh, in degrees. Um, or I'm sorry, in, in percentage, the rate of turn and uh, of the autopilot. The further up, the higher up the number, the faster it's going to turn. Okay. And what this, uh, what the uh, rate of turn step gain is, is for controlling the rudder to turn. Uh, the higher up the number, the more sensitivity the rudder is going to have in controlling the turn to maintain heading. The lower the number, the rudder won't have as much. If you use zero in this case, the rudder will be completely off. The next one's pretty uh, self-describable. Max heading change. Uh, this is the angle um, of how aggressively the autopilot will make its heading corrections. If you Give it too much, it could roll the plane over, and it's really going to be a problem if you're uh, not at your cruising altitude. Okay. The APRO C gain. The APRO C gain is uh, pretty much the same thing, but it's it's after the rate of climb is taken into consideration. Okay. Then we have what's called the rate of climb limit, which is standard of 10, or I'm sorry, the default. Uh, the, the rate of climb default is 10. It's the maximum per permissible rate of climb uh, that, that the autopilot's going to use. Now, don't forget, guys, this page is all about autopilot settings, okay? Uh, the step gain is the gain at which the thing is going to try to gain its cruising altitude or descend to cruising altitude. Uh, you don't want to be too aggressive here because the thing can nosedive to, to its uh, altitude. And it might scare you a little bit on that. Max altitude change. Uh, this is also very something that you have to... This is how it changes its altitude when you are on autopilot or return to home. Uh, also, the higher you go, the more aggressive it's going to change its altitude. And the lower you go, the less aggressive it's going to be. And here we are. This is the cruise speed. This is something that guys get in and change a lot during the flight. And uh, it's just going to be the, the, the speed that the autopilot is going to try to maintain. Got cruise altitude, pretty, uh, pretty standard, 100 meters. Descent mode, you can go through and you can change uh, how it's going to do it. Mode zero is no descent. Uh, 
No, mode two is slow descent, mode three is active descent, and mode four is, is active descent uh, to cruise altitude. So actually we want mode two. Okay. Actually we want one. What one is, is it'll, uh, it'll, as long as it's close to home, it'll slowly descend to cruise altitude. If it's far away from home, it'll maintain its altitude until it gets closer to home. So that's why I'm in descent mode one. Throttle step, I use uh, zero. Uh, in this case, I'm not using the throttle. I use my own throttle. I just, I still have a hard time trusting these things to control throttle safely and on the ground and stuff like that. Throttle mode one and rudder mode one. Now the auto stabilized gain. This is standard. Uh, with a, this is only to be used with an IMU, and uh, as you guys know, the Dragon uh, OSD doesn't come with an IMU. You can get it separately, and um, it's like sixty or seventy dollars. It's pretty cool. It gives you the artificial horizon, and also it uh, it can maintain, it can stabilize it almost like the uh, FY31 AP or the the FY30A. That there's ways to use that with this uh, as a, as an IMU. And uh, so the auto stabilized gain is the gain at which the airplane is going to try to correct itself without any GPS, just in general for general flying. In order to turn this off, you'd have to log in and turn that number down to zero. Um, to turn it up, make it more aggressive, it goes higher. GPS stabilized gain. Now, I don't use it in this case. A lot of guys do, and it's just using the satellites. Uh, you don't need an IMU for G GPS stabilized gain. It just uses the satellites to do it, and uh, it works pretty good as far as uh, what I've what I've dealt with it. Uh, you do have to have good satellite hold. You, you you want at least like seven or eight satellites, and it'll help it'll help you with uh, the stabilization. Uh, altitude limit. This is the altitude. It's the angle uh, of the pitch, which uh, will override the autopilot input. So. Um, if the autopilot says, hey, let's pitch up 40 degrees at, at 30, this thing's going to kick in and say, no, that's, that's way too uh, aggressive, and uh, we don't want to do that. So that's what the altitude limit is. It's the angle of, uh, of pitch in the, in the climb or descent. Pit distance, this is pretty much having to do with waypoints. Current waypoint zero, and on the bottom there, which you can't see. Uh, there is another thing that says waypoint visit. You could have it loiter, uh, come home, and uh, different things. So that's the autopilot for the Dragon on-screen display. That's what I use. Those are the settings I use. And I will leave it on the screen here for a second to show you guys uh, the exact numbers I use. And this is for a standard uh, Penguin, FPV Penguin from ReadyMade RC. Um, there is, uh, you can set up wings on this. We'll touch base on the next menu real quick. All right, guys, the next menu I'm going to show you guys is the custom settings menu. This has to do with setting up your autopilot as far as uh, directions or uh, the, the control direction of the airplane and also the menu direction of how I move the stick down and the cursor goes down to the left and to the right. Um, so we're going to get into the custom settings here. Real quick, we go through, I have one PPM stream going to the receiver. From It's a Dragon Link receiver, so it works out really well. Um, so you just assign the different channels, and everything can plug into the on-screen display. Uh, the four, it has four servo outs, and uh, also your controls and stuff like that to get into the menus. The control channel I have for autopilot, and that is, is channel five. Aileron is one. Elevator is two. Rudder is four. Throttle normally would be three, but in this case, I don't have a throttle hooked up. Uh, aileron two is 15. The reason why I set these there is because I don't have an aileron two. Uh, my, I am using a Y cable for my ailerons. There is another way to set this up with uh, having the aileron separate if you want flapper ons or whatnot. Um, so if you move the cursor all the way to 15, it keeps you from accidentally hitting it on another switch and changing something drastically. Flaps, same thing, I don't have flaps. Pan and tilt, um, I have them on seven and eight. I currently don't have the pan and tilt system on the airplane, but uh, when I do, it's ready to go. 
The gain channel, same thing, you can uh, sign a VR knob, but when you do this, you have to be very careful because it will change the gains through the whole uh, on-screen display. So all of your gains are going to change together. Switch channel, same thing, five. Now this is where, if the arrow says you need to go left, well, uh, let's say 45 degrees to get home, and you hit your autopilot and it goes to the right, then this is the this is the one you need to change the aileron direction same with the elevator let's say you're at uh, let's say you're at 80 meters and you know your cruise is at 100 and you set it to go home and it descends well the elevator is in the wrong direction and that's why you reverse that you don't reverse it on your radio you reverse it in here and it'll it'll stay the same on the airplane if it doesn't stay the same on the airplane then reverse it in your radio only after you've reversed it in here. Aileron menu direction uh, and elevator menu direction pretty simple. If I move the if I move the elevator down and the menu cursor goes up, just reverse it. These are both normal and worked out for me. This is uh, the outputs on the board for your servos. Output one, I have my ailerons on a Y cable. Two, I have elevator. Three, where the throttle would normally go, I had none. Um, I, I directly control the throttle at all times. And four, I have the rudder. So uh, this is a real quick video, guys, on how to set up the autopilot for the on-screen display, uh, the Dragon Labs on-screen display. Mine has an IMU. You do not have to have an IMU for the autopilot to work. Um, it's just nice to have a horizon if you like uh, flying through clouds and at night, stuff like that. It's, it's always good to have an artificial horizon. Uh, so you know your orientation or your attitude and um, real quick in these uh, other menu settings here I always reset the altitude floor you just hold the stick to the right reset home you hold the stick to the right and that will only reset once you have enough satellites and once again if you make any changes guys always save it to the EEPROM just holding the stick to the right saves it and uh, I'll make another video showing you guys this other stuff at a later time uh, oh, real quick, fail-safe positions, guys. Very important. Make sure you set your fail-safes up on your radio and uh, or the Dragon Link system. The radio fail-safe will always uh, be uh, the master to the slave of, of anything else. So let's say you have a uh, fail-safe on your on-screen display and your radio fail-safe is going to override that, okay? Uh, just so you guys know, that's really how it works. Also, servo directions test. After you guys get this autopilot set up, you want to make sure that your servos are going in the right uh, direction. It's a good way to check that. Go to server direction test, move the aileron stick to the right, and your right aileron, which I'll show you guys here. So I'm in servo test, I move the stick to the right, and your right aileron should, should move up. And if it moves down, then they need to be reversed. So, um, set hold position. This is a good way to set your fail -safe. When you're in the air and you're flying at level, trim it out, go down, open your menu, go to set hold position, and that's going to remember. That's going to remember for your fail safes uh, what level flight is. Okay. Uh, if you guys have any other questions about Dragon on screen display or have problems getting anything wired together. Uh, just message me or, or ask, and I'll be sure to uh, get back to you and help you, okay? Thanks for watching, guys. If this video gave you any kind of uh, help, give me a thumbs up, and uh, be sure to subscribe. Thanks.